Dear friends, once upon a time, I was invited to celebrate Mass in a particular church. And when I entered the sacristy, there was a note I read in the sacristy, which had a very deep impact in me. And the note read, Please, Father, celebrate this Mass as if it is your first Mass, your only Mass, and your last Mass. I reflected deeply on the meaning of those words. Celebrate this Mass as if it is your first, as if it is your only Mass, as if it is your last Mass. Especially that last line, the last Mass. And by the time I went into the church to celebrate the Mass, I bet the experience was different. Because I tried to celebrate the Mass as if to say that, that would be my very last Mass on earth. Indeed, it would be helpful if we live by this dictum. Live every day as if it is your last. With these words, I welcome you to today's episode of the Liturgy of the Word with Father Evaristus Egemeyo Abu. Today is the last day in the month of August 2023. The 31st day of August. And it is a Thursday, the Thursday of the 21st week in ordinary time. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, as we study your word today, we beg you to grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and to practice what we preach. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 3, verses 7 to 13. Our responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 90, while our gospel passage is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 24, verses 42 to 51. First reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brethren, in all our distress and affliction, we have been comforted about you through your faith. For now we live, if you stand fast in the Lord. For what thanksgiving can we render to God for you? For all the joy which we feel for your sake before our God. Praying earnestly night and day, that we may see you face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now, may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all men as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fill us with your merciful love, O Lord, and we shall exalt. Fill us with your merciful love, O Lord, and we shall exalt. You turn man back to dust and say, Return, O children of men. To your eyes a thousand years are like yesterday come and gone, or a watch in the night. Fill us with your merciful love, O Lord, and we shall exalt. 
Then teach us to number our days, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Turn back, O Lord, how long? Show pity to your servants. Fill us with your merciful love, O Lord, and we shall exalt. At dawn, fill us with your merciful love. We shall exalt and rejoice all our days. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Give success to the work of our hands. Oh, give success to the work of our hands. Fill us with your merciful love, O Lord, and we shall exalt. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Watch therefore and be ready. The Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be, glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Watch, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the householder had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have watched and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is the faithful and wise servant? whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is delayed and begins to beat his fellow servants and eats and drinks with the drunken. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not know, when he does not expect him, and, and at an hour he does not know. And we punish him and put him with the hypocrites. Dear men will weep and gnash their teeth. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is quite instructive that Jesus Christ mentions the punishment of the servant is that he will be beaten and put together with the hypocrites. Yesterday, we heard Jesus Christ saying, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you are like whitewashed tombs. Outwardly, you appear beautiful and religious and holy and righteous to others. But inwardly, you are full of all kinds of uncleanness. In other words, the best way to prepare for the coming of the master is to avoid hypocrisy. To be clean inside out. That is the best way to prepare for the coming of the master. We cannot afford to deceive people. 
we cannot deceive people. In fact, we can only deceive ourselves. So we must be ready at all times. We must stand and be on guard. We must remember that we are just on loan on earth. In other words, everything we see around us right now is borrowed. It's not really our own. And one day, we shall have to give an account of our lives. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 23, tells us, Guard your heart with all vigilance, because out of it proceeds the issues of life. Your life is basically determined by your thoughts. When you think good thoughts, you also do good things. And when you do good things, they have ripple effect in bringing about good thoughts. We must be on guard at all times. And how, do we, how, how are we to be on guard at all times? We must keep our hearts engaged. Jesus Christ said, Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. God has given us an assignment to do. And God wants us to be doing it. That is the best way to prepare for the last day. It's not just a matter of sleeping. Because when we sleep, we leave room for an enemy to come and sow bad seed in us. Remember the parable that Jesus Christ gave. The parable of the good seed and the bad seed. How the enemy came at night to sow bad seed. Matthew chapter 13, read from verse 25 onwards. So we should not sleep in the name of waiting for the last day. We must get busy. If you don't engage the heart, if you don't engage the mind, you will sleep off. A good security man never sleeps off on duty. A good security man does not simply sit down to watch. He ensures that he is busy. Because it is only when he is busy, that is when he will catch the thief. But when he's not busy, he will slip off. Guarding a place is not just a matter of watching the place. It's a matter of selecting what to do so that you are constantly conscious. So God does not just want to find us awake when he comes. He wants to find us busy doing that which he has assigned us to do. And what is this that he has assigned us to do? To love our neighbor as ourselves. To let our light shine. To keep his commandments. To do that which is pleasing in his sight. Always. That is what it means to be on guard. That is what it means to be prepared for the last day. We must remind ourselves that this world does not belong to us. We came empty and we shall live empty. And this should enable us to let go of worries, to let go of problems, to let go of hearts. Because people will surely offend you. We cannot prevent people from offending us. But we can always select how we react to it. Sometimes, we just need to remind ourselves, with this matter, if I was to be dead today, if I died today, will it matter? I'm planning to revenge on somebody, and I don't even know whether I will be alive tomorrow. Why don't I just let it go? Just let it go. Just forgive and forget. Oh, I want to have this. I want to have that. I'm walking towards this. I'm walking towards that. Tomorrow is not assured. And so even if I don't achieve this, even if I don't get this, let me not kill myself today before I eventually die. Tomorrow, we, 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 are, we are sojourners on earth. We are strangers. We're just moving by. So live freely. Live your life. Knowing or, or live your life with the assumption that today might just be your last day. Today might just be my last day. So whatever you do, do it well. Always put God in mind. Because death can come at any time and at any day. 
it is not evil. It is not as if we are wishing ourselves to die. But we are just being prepared. We are just, we're just living our life in such a way that if we die today, let it be that we have lived well. Or let it be that God himself in heaven will clap for us and say, Welcome, my child, into paradise. May God bless his words in our hearts. May God give us the grace, the wisdom to constantly remind ourselves that this world does not belong to us. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. Happy last day of August and I wish you the very best this new month that we are about to enter tomorrow, the month of September. God bless you.